commander of Apollo 11. Hundred years ago, Jules Stern wrote a book about a voyage to the moon. His spaceship, Columbia, took off from Florida, landed in the Pacific Ocean after completing a trip to the moon. Seems appropriate to us to share with you some of the reflections of the crew as the modern day Columbia completes its rendezvous with the planet Earth and the same Pacific Ocean tomorrow. Here's Mike Collins. Roger, this trip of ours to the moon may have looked to you simple or easy. I'd like to assure you that that has not been the case. The Saturn V rocket, which put us into orbit, is an incredibly complicated piece of machinery, every piece of which works flawlessly. This computer up above my head has a 38,000 word vocabulary each word of which has been very carefully chosen to be of the utmost value to us, the crew. The switch, which I have in my hand now, has over 300 counterparts in the command module alone, of this one single switch design. In addition to that, there are a myriad of circuit breakers, levers, rods, and other associated controls. The SPS engine, our large rocket engine, on the aft end of our service module, must have performed flawlessly or we would have been stranded in lunar orbit. The parachutes up above my head must work perfectly tomorrow or we will plummet into the ocean. We have always had confidence that all this equipment will work and work properly, and we continue to have confidence that it will do so for the remainder of the flight. All this is possible only through the blood, sweat, and tears of a number of people. First, the American workmen who put these pieces of machinery together at the factory. Second, the painstaking work done by the various test teams during the assembly and the retest after assembly. Finally, the people at the Manned Spacecraft Center, both in management, in mission planning, in flight control, and last but not least, in crew training. This operation is somewhat like the periscope of a submarine. All you see is the three of us, but beneath the surface are thousands and thousands of others. To all those, I would like to say thank you very much. Eleven, this is Houston. We're getting a good picture of Buzz now, but no voice modulation. And would you open up the f-stop on the TV camera? Uh, try a two-two, please. It appears to be a lot better now. We're still not receiving Buzz's audio. Good evening. I'd like to discuss with you a few of the more symbolic aspects of the flight of our mission, Apollo 11. As we've been discussing the events that have taken place in the past two or three days here on board our spacecraft, we've come to the conclusion that this has been far more than three men on a voyage to the moon. More still than the efforts of a government and industry team more even than the efforts of one nation. We feel that this stands as a symbol of the insatiable curiosity of all mankind to explore the unknown. Neil's statement the other day upon first setting foot on the surface of the moon, this is a small step for a man, but a great leap for mankind, I believe sums up these feelings very nicely. We accepted the challenge of going to the moon. The acceptance of this challenge was inevitable. 
The relative ease with which we carried out our mission, I believe, is a tribute to the timeliness of that acceptance. Today, I feel we're fully capable of accepting expanded roles in the exploration of space. In retrospect, we have all been particularly pleased with the call signs that we very laboriously chose for our spacecraft, Columbia and Eagle. We've been particularly pleased with the emblem of our flight, depicting the U.S. Eagle, bringing the universal symbol of peace from the Earth, from the planet Earth, the moon, that symbol being the olive branch. With our overall crew choice to deposit a replica of this symbol on the moon. Recently, in reflecting the events of the past several days, a verse from the Psalms comes to mind to me. I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him? responsibility for this flight lies first with with history and with the giants of science who have preceded this effort. Next to the American people who have through their will indicated their desire. Next to four administrations and their congresses for implementing that will. And then to the agency and industry team that built our spacecraft. The Saturn, the Columbia, the Eagle, and the little EMU. The spacesuit and backpack that was our small spacecraft out on the lunar surface. I'd like to give a special thanks to all those Americans who built those spacecraft. Did the construction, the design, the test, and put their their heart and all their abilities in, into those crafts. To those people, tonight we give a special thank you. And to all the other people that are listening and watching tonight, Good night from Apollo 11. This is Apollo Control, 179 hours, 9 minutes, ground elapsed time. During the past half hour, there have been some exchanges between spacecraft communicator Bruce McCandless here in Mission Control and the crew of Apollo 11. One item they're trying to sort out uh, and troubleshoot some difficulties with the biomedical sensors attached to the chest of command module pilot Mike Collins. Let's uh, play back the accumulated tape and hopefully by the time it's ended we will have picked up communications again and we'll rejoin the conversation live. Roll tape, please. Houston, Apollo 11. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Roger, how's our thruster firing activity? Uh, we're about ready to crank up PTC if you are. Roger, go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. Go ahead. This is Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. 11, we'd like you to shift to an omni-antenna configuration at the present time. 
for requesting the S-band antenna omni switch to Bravo and the S-band antenna omni switch to omni. The high gain antenna track in manual pitch minus five zero yaw two seven zero over. Roger, uh, I'll do that right now. Roger, and if Mike has a minute, we'd like to do a little bit of troubleshooting. It seems he's either uh, flat chested or something because we've lost respiration rate on the biomed telemetry. That is the ZPN trace down here is flat. I used to save a little bit ago. Hold on one. All the blasted wires are all connected, is all I know. Okay, Mike, we had a request that you disconnect the yellow connector from the signal conditioner and verify that it looks okay, reconnect it, and then if you would check the two electrodes that are placed, one on each side of your lower rib cage, over. I'll bet you there's a smile on Charles Rose's face. Uh, Cliff is not on right now. Gene Kranz just uh, relieved him a few minutes ago. Roger that. All those wires and things look normal up here. So Roger, Mike. We could see variations on our trace as you connected and disconnected, but uh, the medics still don't have a signal. Looks like you're sending us a message of some sort. All right. I promise to let you know if I stop breathing. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Houston, broadcasting in the blind, request Omni Bravo, request Omni Bravo, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, communication reestablished. Apollo 11, this is Houston, will you confirm you are in Omni Bravo, over. Uh, okay, that ought to give it to you. Roger out. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Mike, we're still getting a flat trace on you for the impedance pneumograph. Uh, before you turn in this evening, you might try putting some fresh paste in the sensors, and if that doesn't work, the medics have agreed to forget about it, over. Uh, Mike's off the loop right now. I'll, uh, I'll convey the message. Okay, thank you. Here's the power lamp thing, Em. Uh, Roger, Mike. The trace on your uh, respiration rate is still flat. Uh, if you have time this evening before turning in, it was suggested that you try putting some fresh paste in the two electrodes that go on the side of your lower rib cage. And if that doesn't work, just give up on it. This is Apollo Control. Columbia now 85,198 nautical miles out from Earth. Approaching Earth at a velocity of 6,443 feet per second. We're still standing by for resumption of air to ground communications. Which may be difficult in as much as Capcom is leaving the room. We'll continue to monitor air ground as the crew prepares for their pre sleep checklist, sets up the passive thermal control mode. and sacks out for about a 10-hour rest period in preparation for tomorrow's entry and subsequent recovery in the mid-Pacific.
aboard the carrier Hornet. Now hove two on the aiming point, or near the aiming point. Standing by at 179 hours, 27 minutes ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 180 hours, 25 minutes, ground elapsed time. We have some four minutes accumulated tape in recent uh, transmissions between Columbia and the ground. We'll uh, roll these tapes at this time.
Honey circle, Houston contact. Net one, voice check. Honey circle, read you loud and clear. Uh, Roger, read you the same. Houston, Apollo 11. How much longer do you want to keep charging uh, battery B? 11, this is Houston. And nominally, we're looking for about another hour and a half, but what we'd like to do is continue charging until shortly before you turn in for the night over. That'll be fine. Are you going to want to charge A again at all? Negative, 11. Okay. Eleven, this is Houston. At about 180.45, we'll be handing over from Goldstone to Honeysuckle. And I'm handing over to Charlie. And I'll see you when you get back. Over. Okay, Bruce. Uh, good night. Thank you. Roger, good night. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, been a pleasure working with you. Have a nice trip down. This is Apollo Control. The uh, weird noise has been reported by uh, network controller is not being on the downlink from the spacecraft. Now it's stopped. Let's leave the circuit open here in the period prior to the time the crew goes to sleep and monitor the air ground circuit. This is Apollo Control. We've been standing by now for quite some time for resumption of communications, but uh, apparently no one is saying anything tonight. Apollo 11 now 78,134 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 6,785 feet per second. And at 181 hours 17 minutes, Round elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. We've uh, had one brief communication from Apollo 11. Spacecraft communicator Bruce McCandless is out of the room. The assistant flight director Chuck Lewis went down to the console to talk. Uh, let's play that tape back and rejoin live uh, when the conversation picks up again. Houston, Apollo 11, over. Apollo 11, Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, Houston. Uh, for retro, I have the uh, anticipated location of all the entry storage and. Uh, I suggest you, you pull out the entry checklist and we'll go through uh, those maps in the front of it. Apollo 11, uh, Houston, uh, could you stand by uh, just a few minutes? Uh, Charlie and Flight are out uh, getting a weather briefing. They'll be back shortly. Say again? Say again? Is this on? No, this is uh, Chuck Lewis. Uh, Charlie Duke is out with uh, flight getting a weather briefing right now. Okay, 
They're not drinking coffee, I know. <laughs> They'll be back momentarily. Stand corrected. That's Charlie Duke on the Capcom slot. Uh, Bruce McCandless in the last half hour has been relieved. Uh, Charlie is likely to respond now. Uh, he's putting on his headset. We'll listen in. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, over. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Uh, did you get the word on the entry checklist? Uh, Roger, Mike. We sure did. Uh, we're ready to talk about it if you are over. I think the quickest thing is go through page by page the uh, first part of the entry checklist where it has a map. Starting on the page with compartment L2 and L3. Are you with me? Roger, with you. Okay, L2 is as shown. L3 is as shown. There's about half the food remaining in L3. Roger. Where it says where it says note the CMP PGA uh, is located in the L-shaped bag with the other two PGAs. The LEM shield was jettisoned with the or correction the uh, CMP's uh, helmet shield was jettisoned with the LEM. and his helmet and gloves instead of being in the sleep restraint are in the hatch bag. Okay, let's see. Now, your PGA is in the L-shaped bag with the other two PGAs, and your helmet and gloves are in the L-shaped bag instead of the sleep restraint. Uh, the, the helmet and gloves are in the hatch bag, the great big bag that's underneath the left-hand couch that you put the uh, hatch in. All right, I thought I, that's what I copied. Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay, the next page is identical, except nitpick and point out R1, we got the entry checklist. Other than that, it's identical. And the third page has got some changes. Go ahead. In uh, A1, are you with me? I'm over there in compartment A1 now. Go ahead, Mike, over. Department A1, uh, the 16 millimeter magazine uh, will be located in window number four. Instead of five tissue dispensers, uh, there's only one of them left. Uh, in compartment U3, the 16 millimeter bracket is on window four. In the PGA bag, uh, add the uh, CMP's PGA plus add two LCGs. In compartment A8, delete two LCGs, add one PPK, making a total of four, and add 10 pounds of LEM miscellaneous equipment. We told you five the other day, we think 10 is probably closer, over. Copy. Ready for the next page? Right, go ahead, Mike. Okay, next page in compartment B1, we estimate about 15% of that food is remaining. In B2, uh, we took the PPK out of there and put trash in it. Uh, in B3, the 16 millimeter cable, the 18 millimeter lens, and the right angle mirror are on window number four. And that, sir, brings you all up to date. Roger. How about the uh, levers, uh, Mike? Uh, where'd you put those, over? Uh, they're in the uh, hatchback. Roger. Stand by. Uh, the only, our only concern, 11, is with the stuff you got in the hatchback. That's a pretty big bulk between you and A8, and uh, we'd like to talk about uh, moving that over to the sleeper train. If you'll stand by, I'll verify that. Over. Okay. 11, Houston, our recommendation on the uh, gear you got in the helmet 
bag, uh, correction, the hat ship bag, would be to remove uh, that stuff and put it in the sleep restraint under the right couch. The reason is that the hatch bag straps are only uh, configured for zero G, and it's a pretty difficult job getting it latched down. Uh, with the, the gear in the sleep restraint, it's a pretty standard uh, latch down procedure, and you can also use the uh, beta cord that you have on board. You concur, over. Yeah, we'll look at it, Charlie, but you know. Roger. And I've got a couple other things, Mike. We need to uh, terminate battery B charge at this time. And also, the uh, weather is clobbering in at our targeted uh, landing point uh, due to uh, a scattered thunderstorms. Uh, we don't want to tangle with one of those, so we're going to uh, move the, your aim point uh, up range, uh, correction to be down range, to uh, target for a 1500 nautical mile entry so we can guarantee uh, up uh, lift control. The new coordinates are 13 uh, degrees, 19 minutes north, 169, 10 minutes west. Uh, the weather in that area is super. We got uh, 2,000 scattered, uh, 8,000 scattered with uh, 10 miles visibility and uh, six foot seas. And the Hornet is sitting in great position to get to uh, that targeted position. Over. This is Apollo Control. To recra recap briefly. The conversation a few moments ago between Charlie Duke and the crew of Columbia because of forecast thunderstorms in the prime recovery area in the mid-Pacific for tomorrow. The uh, Apollo spacecraft's lifting capabilities will be used to stretch the entry path some 215 nautical miles farther downrange toward Hawaii to a new uh, landing point, or aiming point, with the very rough preliminary coordinates of 13 degrees, 19 minutes north, by 169 degrees, 10 minutes west. These numbers will be refined through the night as the retrofire officer exercises the computer and comes up with more definitive numbers. These will be passed on as they are available. Apollo 11 now 75,951 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 6,899 feet per second. At 181 hours 50 minutes and standing by on the air ground circuit, this is Apollo Control. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, some of the general last minute uh, updates here. On the entry, we were told you on the camera to uh, set it at 50 feet. Turns out the biggest number on the camera is 25 feet, so uh, just set it at infinity. Over. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. We're ready to put you to bed and say good night if uh, you give us your uh, crew status report and verify that you changed out the uh, CO2 canister a moment ago. Over. Stand by. Thank you much. Uh, 
Apollo 11, Houston. It's a good night from the white team for the last time. We'll be off when you wake up in the morning. It's uh, been a pleasure working with you guys. It was a beautiful show from all three of you. We appreciate it very much, and we'll see you when you get out of the LRL. Over. Okay, Charlie. Uh, thanks to you and all the white team for a great job down there all the way through. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you very much, darling. Thanks. Thanks to you guys, too. Love in Houston. Uh, Mike, you get your chance at the landing tomorrow. No go around. This is Apollo Control. All good nights having been said, the crew of Apollo 11 is now uh, preparing to get their 10 hours rest. And uh, their last night in space here in the control center on one of the 10 by 10 Ida 4 television projectors. A drawing has been projected on the screen, uh, ribbing Capcom Charlie Duke for his uh, slight error yesterday on the television pass where he mistook the moon for Earth as a spacecraft uh, midway between moon and Earth and it says, Neil, I just spotted a continent on the moon. Uh, Charlie, the camera's on the Earth now. Apollo 11 now 74,906 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 6,954 feet per second, and at 182 hours 6 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 182 hours 10 minutes ground elapsed time. We thought that was all the air to ground for tonight prior to the crew going to sleep, but just a few moments ago there was a brief exchange reporting to Apollo 11 crew that uh, the McDonnell Observatory in far west Texas had the spacecraft in their telescope field of view. Let's roll that tape now and then uh, shut it down again. 11 Houston, we got some word just a moment ago that the McDonnell Observatory is, uh, so they have picked up the spacecraft in their telescope. Over. Outstanding. We uh, have been looking for their laser, uh, but uh, haven't had much luck yet. Roger, we'll pass it on to them, Neil. Thank you. This is Apollo Control. That completes uh, the very brief exchange of a few moments ago. At 182 hours, 11 minutes. Ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. 183 hours, 25 minutes. Ground elapsed time. Columbia spacecraft now 69,520 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 6, 000, as you were 7,262 feet per second. Crew now in their rest period. Started their sleep period uh, a little over an hour ago to reiterate 
the change in landing point. This is a weather avoidance situation where thunderstorms are forecast for the aiming point, the original aiming point in the mid-Pacific. Therefore, after the normal entry interface, the lifting characteristics of the Apollo command module will be used to extend the entry range some 215 nautical miles farther downrange toward Hawaii to a preliminary aiming point. That is, the aiming point may shift around between now and uh, entry, which is some 11 hours 36 minutes from now. But at any rate, the uh, aiming point as calculated now is some uh, 13 degrees 19 minutes north latitude by 169 degrees 10 minutes west uh, longitude. The preliminary time of drogue deploy uh, is 195 hours 12 minutes or as you were yes 195 hours 12 minutes 4 seconds and the net extension uh, over the earlier splash time is something like 40 seconds. At 183 hours, 27 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 185 hours, 29 minutes, ground elapsed time, 9 hours, 33 minutes until entry. Crew is still asleep at this time, scheduled to wake up at 189 hours, ground elapsed time, some 3 and a half hours from now. We've had no word from the crew. Since the uh, scheduled sleep period began, Apollo 11, now 61,034 nautical miles out from Earth, and a velocity of 7,815 feet per second. At 185 hours, 30 minutes, Ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. 186 hours, 28 minutes. Ground elapsed time. 8 hours, 35 minutes. To entry. Crew of Columbia still asleep at this time. Some uh, two and a half hours away from wake up time at 189 hours ground elapsed time. Because of weather avoidance in the prime recovery zone in mid Pacific, southwest of Hawaii, it has been decided uh, some time ago to shift the landing point or aiming point some 215 nautical miles downrange from the pre-mission aiming point and uh, all of the numbers concerned with entry and post-entry events have been generated and we shall forward them at this time. Pencils ready. Command module, service module, separation. 194 4807 ground elapsed time 1120 08 central daylight time entry interface that's 400,000 feet above the earth's surface ground elapsed time 195 0307 
11.35.08 Central Daylight Time. Begin blackout. 195.03.25 Ground elapsed time. 11.35.08 Central Daylight Time. O5G 195-0335 GET 11-35-36 CDT End of Blackout 195-0656 GET 11, 38, 57, CDT. Drogue shoots deploy. 195, 12, 0, 4, GET. 11, 44, 0, 5, CDT. Main shoots deploy. 195, One uh one two fifty two eleven forty four fifty three CDT Touchdown one ninety five seventeen forty nine GET eleven forty nine fifty CDT Maximum G loading to be pulled during the entry phase will be 6.12 G's Entry velocity That's at uh, entry interface of 400,000 feet will be 36,194 feet per second Flight path angle minus 6.5 degrees. Aiming point location 13 degrees 19 minutes north latitude 169 degrees 09 minutes west longitude. At 186 hours, 32 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 187 hours, 28 minutes, ground elapsed time. 7 hours, 34 minutes to entry. Flight Surgeon Ken Beers reports that uh, all three crew members are sleeping soundly at this time. Their um, sleep period will end uh, probably at 189 hours, although they may uh, sleep an additional hour to uh, 190 hours. Spacecraft being uh, tracked now through the uh, Guam station. A line projected out from Earth uh, to what's called a sub-satellite point, or a point directly under the spacecraft, would put it over dead center of Australia. At 187 hours, 29 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control.
This is Apollo Control, 188 hours, 28 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 11, now 46,254 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity continuing to increase, now 9,081 feet per second. It'll be a dramatic increase in velocity as the spacecraft gets closer in. Here in uh, Mission Control Center, the uh, entry team headed up by Flight Director Milt Windler is beginning to come aboard. Handover in progress from uh, Gene Krantz's white team. Crew still asleep at this time. For some six hours, 34 minutes from entry interface. And at 188 hours, 29 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 188 hours, 43 minutes. Mid-course correction number seven has been canceled, and we will add one hour of uh, rest time to the flight plan. Crew will be awakened at 190 hours elapsed time. To repeat, we have canceled mid-course correction number seven, and we will allow the crew to sleep until 190 hours elapsed time. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 189 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 40,961 nautical miles from the Earth approaching at a velocity of 9,671 feet per second. Mid-course correction number seven has been canceled, and as a result, we will let the crew sleep until an elapsed time of 190 hours. Weather in the recovery area. Well, we're getting a call from Apollo 11 now. Let's uh, listen to that. Uh, Roger, we were going to let you sleep in until about 190 hours. Mid-course 7 is uh, not required. Okay, thank you. gave us a call at 189 hours, 29 minutes. We advised them uh, of the cancellation of the mid-course correction. Weather in the recovery area, the skies will be partly cloudy. Cloud bases uh, at 2,000 feet scattered. Wind east, northeast at 18 knots. Six foot C, temperature near 80 degrees. This landing area is 215 miles to the northeast from the original landing area, moved because of thunder showers in the original area. This new location should allow the uh, recovery ship USS Hornet to arrive in Hawaii four to five hours earlier than originally planned. We expect it may be possible for the uh, carrier to arrive at Pearl Harbor uh, somewhere between eight and nine o'clock 
on July 26th. That's Saturday. now and it's not likely we'll hear a lot from them in the right away but we'll continue to stay up live for any conversation.